Today, we are going to recap the plot of 2021 in American mystery adventure television series The Mysterious Benedict Society. The story happens way ahead in the future. Something mysterious is secretly hurting our world, and it's making people feel more and more nervous every day. This nervousness creates a big problem called the emergency. This problem tricks people into being scared that something really bad will happen. Because of this fear, things like the economy and other world issues get messed up even more. Rainy is a kid who doesn't have parents and really likes reading and spending time alone. He wants to have friends, but the other kids at the orphanage tease him because he's really smart. He often feels like he doesn't fit in, mostly because the other kids aren't as clever as him. The only person who supports him is his Tamil language teacher, Ms. Paramal. One day, she tells him about a test where the winners can get a scholarship to go to a really good school called the Boatwright Academy. Rainy has always dreamed of going to Boatwright Academy, but he's not sure if he's good enough. Ms. Paramal tells him that he's really deserving and will do great. The next day, she takes him to the exam location. They say goodbye after a hug, and then he goes inside. There are lots of other kids there to take the test too. The person in charge of the test is called number two, and she's a bit unusual but very serious. She explains the rules to everyone. Rainy reads the first question, it's about choosing between saving either an elephant or a llama that are falling from a height. He picks the elephant, thinking it might break the llama's fall and save both. He continues to answer more questions, mostly about being kind and caring. Finally, he gets to the last question that asks if he's brave. He takes a moment and then answers that he would like to think so. Number two instructs everyone to put down their pencils. She grades the papers while the students wait patiently. Once she finishes, she tells them that those who pass will move on to the next part of the test. They need to go to a building in the nearby area at 1 p.m. sharp. She also stresses that they can only bring one pencil and one eraser for the test. When Rainy asks if they'll get sharpeners in case their pencils break, she assures them that they'll have everything they need for the test. Then, she reads the list of students who passed, and Rainy's name is the only one on it. Everyone else leaves the area feeling disappointed, but Rainy heads to the next exam room. As he's about to enter, he notices a girl named Rhonda drop her pencil into a sewer drain by accident. While Rhonda's friend walks ahead and leaves her, Rainy steps up and offers to help. They don't have much time before the exam starts, so he breaks his own pencil in half and gives part of it to her, thinking there will be a sharpener inside the exam room. Rhonda is grateful and even suggests that she could share answers with him during the test, but Rainy kindly declines her offer. Inside the examination room, number two informs the students that talking during the test will lead to dismissal. She also warns them that the test will be both long and challenging. A girl groans in response but is immediately disqualified for breaking the silence. Rainy raises his hand to signal that he needs to sharpen his pencil. Number two understands and grants him permission. As the test begins, only a few seconds pass before a boy panics and runs away, shouting that he can't handle it. Meanwhile, Rainy focuses on the questions before him, even though they're quite hard to understand. Most of them are advanced, asking about world history and geography at a high level. Despite the challenge, Rhonda, who is seated just ahead of Rainy, manages to finish the test in only 30 minutes. Before turning in her answers, she discreetly drops a small piece of paper for Rainy. Even though Rainy is struggling with the questions, he chooses not to use the paper. The room is tense, with some students nearly in tears due to the difficulty of the questions. Rainy, even though he doesn't know the answers, takes his time reading each question carefully. He realizes that the solution to the first question is hidden somewhere within the last question. This clever approach reveals that all the answers are subtly embedded within the questions themselves. Armed with this insight, he confidently writes down the answers and performs exceptionally well on the test. After some time, the results are announced once again, and just Rainy manages to pass. He's surprised, especially considering that Rhonda cheated. She wishes him good luck and goes on her way, leaving him waiting for further instructions. Shortly after, another student enters the room, Sticky Washington, who's known for being an A-grade student. Sticky possesses an eidetic memory, which means he can remember everything he sees. Curiously, he's also the sole passer from his group, finding it strange since someone else cheated. As they talk, Sticky and Rainy realize that they shared a similar experience before the test. They both encountered the same girl who dropped her pencil down the drain. Putting the pieces together, they realize that the true purpose of this setup was to test their loyalty and kindness rather than their academic skills. This understanding dawned on them that they had passed because they focused on helping others while the students who solely concentrated on answering the questions did not. Suddenly, a girl bursts into the room, introducing herself as Kate. She's a sporty and daring girl who always carries her trusty red toolbox wherever she goes. Kate explains that she didn't actually pass the test due to its difficulty. 
Instead, she got in because she aided number two in diverting the attention of upset parents by causing a distraction. Soon after, Krista and Dewey join the gathering. They've also succeeded in the exam and feel pretty confident about their chances of entering the Boatwright Academy. Krista is quite knowledgeable and tends to act like she's smarter than everyone else. With the team fully assembled, they are introduced to Milligan, who is in charge of the upcoming test. He tells them to enter a room one by one, starting with Krista. As she enters the room, she notices the floor designed like a chessboard. A note on the floor instructs her to cross the room without stepping on the black or white squares. However, Krista refuses bluntly, believing it's a trick question. Milligan disqualifies her and tells her to leave. Next, Dewey enters the room and utilizes his athleticism to hop onto the yellow squares. Employing his wall-clinging abilities, he leaps effortlessly to the other side of the room, successfully passing the test. Following Dewey, Kate enters with her toolbox full of tools, and she employs a rope from her collection to craft a secure pathway. With her past experience in the circus, Kate is skilled at traversing ropes, so she uses her expertise to reach the opposite side and complete the task. As it becomes Sticky's turn, he reads the question closely and discerns that it specifies not using their feet. In response, he opts to move on all fours and makes his way across the room. Finally, Rainey ponders for an extended while and then takes a straightforward approach by walking to the opposite side of the room. When questioned about how he succeeded in the test, he explains that the floor sections were longer rectangles, implying that they weren't squares. Since the instruction was to avoid stepping on the squares, he confidently walked across and successfully passed the test. Following that, Milligan instructs the group to accompany him to the location where their final test will occur. They are led to a sewer entrance, with Milligan stating that this unconventional pathway leads to their destination. The kids find it peculiar that the entry to such a prestigious school involves walking through a sewer. Rainey also observes that none of the examiners have mentioned the Boatwright Academy so far. Despite this, he maintains his trust in Milligan and follows him, eventually arriving at the front lawn of a grand mansion. Milligan steps away for a brief period to ensure everything is ready inside. During this time, the kids are left to themselves. Dewey takes the opportunity to engage in some exercises, while the other three engage in a conversation about their families. Kate tells the others that her mom died when she was little, and her dad left her at an orphanage. She doesn't blame him because that's how she got into circuses. Rainey shares that he never knew his parents but still wishes he could. Dewey says his parents love him a lot and call him their special child. After their talk, they go inside a mansion that looks like a maze. Rhonda suddenly appears in front of them and admits that she was sent to evaluate them. Their next challenge involves being split up into four different sections of the maze. Their task is to find a way to reach the second floor. The first three to ring a bell once they're on the second floor will be considered as having passed. Rhonda gives them a clue, saying that they should be able to do this even with their eyes closed. The task begins, and Rainey wastes no time in searching for clues. He notices that every doorway has four signs pointing in different directions. Meanwhile, Sticky takes the hint to heart and attempts to navigate the maze with his eyes closed. Thanks to his amazing memory, he's able to figure out the path rather quickly. Kate, on the other hand, thinks creatively. She discovers a vent on the wall, uses it to climb up, and finds her way to the second floor. Then there's Dewey, who decides to shadow Sticky. When they reach the stairs, Dewey slyly rings the bell before everyone else, having outsmarted them. Rainey eventually realizes that the signs in the maze are in braille and provide directions. He follows the signs and also reaches the stairs. He helps Sticky up and together they meet Kate on the second floor. They decide to ring the bell simultaneously, securing their victory. However, Dewey's attempt to ring the bell first gets him disqualified. According to the instructions, the first three to ring the bell will win, and since Sticky, Kate, and Rainey all rang it at the same time, they emerged victorious. Following their success, they meet the mastermind behind the test, Mr. Nicholas Benedict. As they discuss further orientation, a fourth member named Constance joins their team. She's the youngest, smart, and quite witty. Constance has a carefree attitude and isn't bothered by what others think. Interestingly, Constance passed the test in a distinct manner. Firstly, she marked all the questions as wrong, believing they were incorrect. Then, she disregarded the rules and brought more pencils than allowed. During the last test, she chose to enjoy a sandwich instead of solving the maze. Despite her unconventional approach, her unique personality led to her selection for the team. The pivotal moment arrives when Mr. Benedict reveals the truth to them. He explains that they haven't been chosen for Boatwright Academy scholarship, instead, they've been selected for an undercover mission to rescue the world. The kids are left bewildered, struggling to grasp the gravity of the situation. Mr. Benedict clarifies that they're the sole individuals capable of putting an end to the emergency and preventing global turmoil. 
The mystery unravels as it's revealed that a mysterious subliminal message is being transmitted worldwide through radios and televisions. When people listen to these broadcasts, they only hear the sound with the highest frequency. However, hidden beneath that sound are violent messages conveyed in low frequencies, which the human ear cannot pick up. Even though people can't actually hear these messages, their brains react to the frequency. This leads them to unconsciously believe the messages, making them anxious. These messages have caused what we call the emergency, a global panic. After a year of investigating, Mr. Benedict has discovered that these messages are coming from an island where there's a school for kids. That's why only children are allowed there. That's why their group has been chosen for this task. Mr. Benedict tells them they can say no, and he's glad to have met such smart kids. After thinking it over, all of them agree to join the mission and start their training. 